Hello, UFC betters. Welcome to uh, best M another show of best MMA picks. I'm uh, your host JD, and uh, we're going to be breaking down the card for tomorrow, uh, Saturday, uh, November seventh, UFC Fight Night seventy seven Belfort versus Henderson uh, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, I spent quite a bit of time uh, reviewing some footage on this uh, bout on several of the bouts, uh, most mostly all the bouts I've reviewed footage on for this card. So we should have a lot better, a uh, lot better set of picks for for this ma for these matchups. Um, a lot better than the last card for sure. Um, but. Uh, I apologize um, that this came so late. Uh, I had some other commitments today, and uh, I'm having to talk in a low volume because I've got guests in the other room, and I don't want to wake them up. <laughs> but um, I shouldn't, uh, I'm not going to take a, a whole lot of time breaking this down, um, but I'm going to give kind of a brief synopsis of everything that I've uh, seen on footage. Um, but it uh, looks like there are some pretty promising picks for tomorrow. Um, and those will be posted live on Twitter probably about 15 minutes before each card starts. Um, we post all our picks there, so make sure you follow us on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash best MMA picks. Or, um, and also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash plus best MMA picks. Um, Everything that we have here is free. Um, you know, we review a lot of footage. Um, we try to get the best value out of all the lines. Um, it's all, you know, all free. Um, the goal is to get people more money. Um, the goal is to get ourselves more money. Um, so, I mean, it's not gimmicky at all. It's just, that's what we do. So, um, Let's get down to business. So uh, I'm just going to do a screen share here. It worked last time. It seems to work pretty well. That way you don't have to stare at my face the whole time. And uh, try to get this going here for you. Just take me a second. Here we go. And now we're on UFC TV. We don't want that. We don't want to fight bass. Don't want that. So we'll start off here on the UFC website because I like to look at photos of the fires as we talk about them. We're covering the the uh, all the cards undercard main card prelims early prelims so we'll start off with our first bout which is between um, Bruno Correa and Matthias Nicolau both Brazilian fighters both uh, uh, ultimate fighter Brazil contestants um, saw quite a bit of footage on both these guys I have to say that um, Bruno Correa has a lot of heart for a fighter. He has um, mainly, uh, mainly has, uh, uh, you know, heavy submissions skills, likes to get the fight to the ground. However, he does strike. He's kind of somewhat of a sloppy striker. So when he does strike, he tends to be, you know, the first person that comes to mind would be Clay Collard. Very sloppy striker, just kind of leaves himself really open takes a lot of wild swings, swings for the fences a lot, goes for a KO, um, but also leaves himself very open to counter striking, which we've seen in a lot of his professional bouts in um, several smaller organizations. Um, Nicolau is kind of a little bit more of an opposite there. He's a much tighter striker, uh, more deliberate with how he strikes, likes to counter strike, pretty well rounded with striking and ground game. I'd say Bruno has a little bit more ground 
um, potential. He's got, uh, you know, he's locked in more subs, uh, probably a little bit more dangerous on the ground, good at defending subs. Um, very, takes a lot of risks. Um, I could see, we could see an upset here, but um, my lean is to go with Matthias Nicolau. I think he's just a little bit higher fight IQ than his opponent. He's also gotten several um, fight of the night honors or bonuses. Um, and uh, he's got a little bit better striking, I think. His, he's just tighter with the striking, doesn't leave himself open as much. Um, I think that's going to make the difference in this fight. Um, he, he also has a jiu-jitsu black belt, which is something to take note of. So even with uh, Correa being, you know, wanting to try to lock in subs, this guy's going to be able to defend him pretty easily. Um, so, you know, not too worried about that. Um, my lean is definitely to go with this guy. The lines look pretty good in his favor. Um Nicolau is a somewhat heavy favorite at negative 180. And uh, Rodriguez or Correa, Bruno Correa, is uh, underdog at positive 161. We could definitely see him getting uh, a lucky knockout or TKO with a flush hit to the chin. However, I would see that as being highly unlikely in this instance. I don't foresee that happening at all. I, I see it going all three rounds. I would probably lean on the over, which the odds makers suggest here. Um, however, there's a slight chance that the under could hit if, you know, Bruno got a TKO or if a sub was locked in by Nikolai. Um, I don't think any of these guys are going to sub each other though. They're really both pretty good at defending subs. So that's my, my analysis for that fight. <clears throat> Moving on, we have Pedro Munoz and Jimmy Rivera. Munoz coming in as a favorite at negative 162. Rivera is an underdog at positive 145. Over under set at 2.5 rounds with the over favorite at negative 190 and the under at positive 160. I'm just going to take a swig of this Huckleberry beer, which is my favorite. Um, I'm going to go back here. I'm just going to show you a few things with, this, with these fighters. Um, Pedro Munoz is um, one thing that I noticed between uh, both fighters when I viewed footage. Pedro Munoz is also, in comparison to the last two fighters, much more deliberate striker. Doesn't leave himself open. He also trains with Rafael Cordero, which is probably one of the, like, he's the best striking coach in Brazil. Um, I, think he's, I think he's Black House MMA is what it is. Um, from Brazil. Um, I think he trains out of LA, if I remember correctly. But um, trains with Rafael Cordero, just excellent striking, real tight striking. Rivera, also a good striker. However, the difference between the two of these guys is Munoz doesn't leave as many holes in his striking. Doesn't have quite as much power, but he doesn't leave the holes that Rivera leaves. Rivera kind of is one of those swing for the fences type of fighters. Reminds me a lot of like a Jamie, a younger Jamie Varner. Um, definitely has huge power in his hands. The ability to knock people out cold. He also likes to pressure strike, but he also leaves himself vulnerable as well. If you look here, he absorbs six strikes per minute. Defense is somewhat horrible. Not horrible, but much less defended strikes than Munoz. Um, and these stats aren't even really reflective of some of his fights. Um, we don't have a whole lot of stats on him to begin with in the UFC. But um, he does supposedly land a lot of strikes. It says 10 per minute here. Um, that's a little excessive, I think. Um, we haven't seen a whole ton, and that's averaged out over a small number of strikes because of the fact that he's finished opponents so quickly. Um, we definitely could see a finish here, however... I do not feel that Munoz is going to be finished that easily. I think that this one will probably go probably go the distance, actually. I see Munoz being pretty resilient. I don't see him getting tagged easily, if at all. I think Cordero will have him well-prepared. 
to deal with a powerful striker like Rivera. Munoz also has some really good leg kicks. So we could see the leg kicks being a great factor in this fight, being an advantage and slowing down Rivera. Um, if Rivera does win this fight, it's definitely going to be by KO and it's going to be early. So if he doesn't get through that first round um, with a KO, you know, we're going to probably see this one grinded out to a unanimous decision by Munoz. Um, and that's what everybody pretty much thinks with the odds. Um, I don't know what's worth a play here, but I do lean on Munoz to win the fight. And I do lean for it to go over. Um, if we look at the odds, we see Munoz is a negative 162 favorite. And um, Rivera is an underdog. The over is also pretty juiced at um, negative 190. So it's over 2.5 rounds. Another another one of those fights where it might be worth a look at the under for a value play, but I probably I don't know if I'll be touching any of those to be honest. Um, not sure about it, but I would lean for it to go over. Uh, I'd lean with Munoz to win. I don't like taking heavy favorites like that or heavily favored lines. It's just a waste of money because when they don't hit, you had to put down twice as much as you would to win a normal sports bet, which is shitty in my opinion, and you shouldn't do it. Um, the only other way around that is to parlay these kind of things together, chain parlay them, which I may post a couple small parlays or chain parlays just to reduce some of that juice in some of these picks. Um, but, you know, not sure about it yet. Um, Moving on, we have Viscardi Andraj and Gassan Umalatov on the last early fight pass prelim uh, bout. Uh, Andraj is coming in um, with 17 wins, seven losses. Ooh, oh, shit. Um, Umalatov is coming in at, with 15 wins, four losses, and one draw, it looks like. Um, both these guys not super impressed with what I saw, especially Umalatov. Um, I thought he was a little bit lackluster, especially for a Russian fighter. You know, wasn't super impressed with his last fight. Um, I think he's definitely very beatable, not a uh, top tier opponent, but definitely not, uh, you know, somebody who doesn't belong in the USC. Um, definitely grappler like most Russian guys coming in with the Sambo background. Um, he lost to Cathal Pendred, who is a grappler, but probably not as high credentialed grappler. Um, and that's why I just was not impressed with him. He just didn't do much. You know, he, he really didn't go for anything. We might see the complete opposite here with this next fight. You know, we might see him take some more risks, which he probably will have to do if he wants to win this fight. Andrade is really good on the ground. Um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Um, the guy, you know, can lock in the subs quickly and efficiently. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where this fight lands. Um, I probably give the higher wrestling credentials to Amalatov over Andrade, but my natural tendency here is to want to go with the Brazilian in Brazil. Um, and plus, I was not that impressed with Amalatov. Um, this guy definitely has knockout power. His right hand, if you look at some of his last couple fights, the guy just freaking laid out people. You know, first round KOs. Um, you know, and he even had Musoki in trouble in the first round. Just completely dis destroyed him with his right hand. Um, very easily could have been a TKO victory first round. But as the fight wore on or as the fight progressed, he basically kind of wore, got worn out. I mean, he gassed somewhat. Misoki kind of took over and capitalized on that, um, kind of recovered from, you know, the beating that he had taken in the first round. And he came on to win the fight, actually, by unanimous decision. So it was actually a really good fight. But, you know, Andrade could have won that fight, I think. 
And Masoki is a definitely a really tough opponent. He just about knocked him out. So I don't really see Andrade having a problem with Umalatov, who's a lesser opponent than Musoki. Um, so my thoughts are, uh, my lean would be to go with Fiscardi Andrade. I think he's probably going to get a KO here. I could see him knocking Umalatov out. Um, and uh, he's actually an underdog here at positive 114. Um, and I could see this going under the 2.5 rounds. Um, I just think the guy's got power. However, if the fight goes to the ground, we may see it go all three rounds. So just kind of depends on if he's able to land on Umalatov, which I think he will be able to, and how much risk these fighters start, you know, try to take if they're actually going to go for a finish. Umalatov's not going to go for a finish. The guy's a pussy, and he just, you know, he, he, he just doesn't, he's not that aggressive. Um, Andraj, on the other hand, is kind of the opposite. He will go for the finish. So it just kind of depends on who gets the better of who here. And I think that the, the this Cardi Andrade is going to probably get a finish here, whether it be by locking in a sub or a KO. I think he's going to land that right hand, and it's going to end early. I think I could see a first or second round knockout here. So I think that the odds here are pretty good, um, and I like the underdog odds here too. Um, so those are my thoughts on that fight. Uh, next fight, we've got Chaz Skelly and Kevin Souza. Um, really simple here. Skelly, the line is actually, I think, a lot of value here with Skelly. I don't think he's going to have much of a problem with Souza, who leaves himself really open to takedowns. And unless he sealed up that takedown defense, you know, problem that he has, um, which I, I feel he's, you know, Chaz Skelly's fought some really tough fighters. Chaz Skelly fought Mursak Merce, Bektik and, um, Held his own in the fight, but definitely got didn't get dominated. But you know, Bechtek got the better of him in that fight, in my opinion. Um, you know, Skelly probably could have done a little more there. Maybe possibly if he even won the fight. I think he had him in trouble one time, and then you know Bechtek recovered from it. Um, but Skelly's definitely comes from a tough camp. Um, with Johnny Hendricks and all the wrestlers. Um, he's got really high wrestling credentials himself. Um, and I think he's only been doing MMA now for about three years. So he's a relatively new MMA fighter, but his strong base in wrestling really has helped him to dominate most of his opponents. You know, he looked kind of thin at weigh-ins to me, but... I don't really think that's going to matter much against Souza. I think he's still going to be able to land takedowns and get him to the ground. Now, the big question with Souza is whether or not he uses his range and his length to his advantage, but I just don't foresee him being able to stop Skelly from taking him down. You know, Felipe Arantes had no problem getting Souza to the ground, and he's less of a, grapp less of a grappler than Skelly, so I, I don't foresee... You know, this being a problem for Skelly, I think the odds here are good at 167. Um, I don't see it going under. Um, I see this one probably going over. 1.5 rounds is not very long. Um, however, we could see an early knockout or an early finish, early sub, especially if Skelly immediately gets Sousa to the ground, which we'll probably see first round. He'll be on top. <clears throat> So those are my thoughts there. My leans to go with Chaz Skelly to win this one by unanimous decision. Um, next fight. I'm going to go back here to the main screen. Like I said, none of these lean. these are just leans. I changed my mind on a lot of plays, so just keep that in mind when I find out more stuff. Um, or if I get tips or info from anybody that I know in the MMA world, um, which does happen. Um, we also keep an eye on lines and how they change You know, just before fights. We can kind of spot different things. If you look back on my Twitter, I spotted and I called several fixes that I thought that, that were apparent based on the you know heavy line movement and heavy changes in the lines. 
um, you know, sometimes people, I think they know stuff. Um, I don't think that these fights are all, you know, legit, to be honest. There's a lot of funky stuff that we've seen over the years and everybody would agree with me there. Um, so next fight, uh, Clay Guida, Tiago Tavares. Tavares um, has come pretty far actually with his uh, MMA. Um, he's looked a lot better over this last year. Striking has really improved. He's gotten a lot more powerful with his strikes. Just kind of, you know, really improved, kind of coming into his prime. Guido, on the other hand, is kind of uh, diminishing somewhat. Still is a cardio machine like he always is, but never really super dominant. Just kind of bounces around and is a really difficult target. Um, and he also poses a lot of takedown threats. So just really kind of a stalemate type fighter that you just never know if he's going to eke out a decision. It's kind of like one of those things where you, you almost kind of don't want to put money on him because you don't know if he's going to lay an egg or if he's, you know, going to come out and eke out a crazy undeserved decision. Um, Tavares, on the other hand, usually pretty do either dominant or just kind of, you know, gets dominated. Um, in this fight, I don't necessarily see him dominating Clay Guida, but I definitely see him out being able to outstrike Guida. Um, and I definitely see him having a little bit more... Uh, I don't see him being able to take down Guida easily. Um, and I don't necessarily... I, I think the takedown advantage is going to go to Guida. I think Guida would be able to get Tavares to the ground easier than Tavares would be able to get Guida to the ground. Um, Guida has better takedown defense by about 5%. But, you know, both these guys are pretty even. This is pretty evenly matched fight. And naturally, with being in Brazil, I want to go with the Brazilian. And, um, you know, he's a younger fighter, probably a little stronger. Guida's cardio is still good. Um, so cardio advantage would probably go to Guida, but... Guida's just not really looked amazing to me. I think he's definitely kind of past his prime and just kind of trying to get another paycheck, you know. But he seemed pretty fired up at the weigh-ins, and he looked good at the weigh-ins. So, and he's definitely a fan favorite. Um, he uh, came came off of a win to Robbie Peralta, um, who he took down six times, it looks like. Didn't have much of a problem there, although Peralta's not really a full-time fighter. That was kind of a gimme fight for Guida. Um, he's also won Tatsuya Kawajiri, who's also a very good wrestler. So Guida definitely has that ability to be able to take people down and keep them there. Bermuda's had no problems taking Guida down, though. So I think Tavares, I think, is a good pick here. Um, although I'm, I'm just not sure. It just depends on what type of Clay Guida we see tomorrow, but he's a negative 149 favorite. I would not put that much money on Guida, to be honest. I'd rather take my chances with Tavares at positive 135 and get positive money. Um, however, I'm just not super confident in that. Um, so I don't know if I'll be touching it or not, but that's kind of what I'm looking at there. And the over, um, <laughs> Definitely don't see any finishes here. I just see it being a boring ass decision, like we always do with Clay Guida. Um, you know, he does get the crowd going. You know, I, I do have to say I do like Clay Guida, but you know, I feel like I've seen a lot of him already, and uh, maybe we'll see somebody get finished. Who knows? But the under is a positive two fifteen. I probably wouldn't touch that. Um, so yeah, my my lean here. Boy, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean with the Brazilian here, Tiago Tavares, to win by a split decision. I think it's gonna be really close. It could go either way, you know. And I don't think that I can't pay that much for Guida. It's just not even it. You know, I just can't pay that much. I don't know that he's gonna actually win. I don't like flipping a coin like that and getting you know negative fifty, you know. 
having to pay fifty dollars more there that's not cool so probably just best to lay off of that one um, unless you feel like being a degenerate putting money on guida because you like him and those are just my thoughts on that so next fight um johnny case 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 uh, Johnny Case versus Jan Cabral. Jan Cabral is a very high-level jiu-jitsu guy. Case is a striker mainly, but he also has really good ground and wrestling, as we saw in his last fight that he won. Um, very, very game fighter. I'm really pretty impressed with Case in just about all his fights. Um, I don't see him losing here. I definitely see him getting the better of Cabral. I don't see Cabral being able to get Case to the ground. Um, and he's very difficult to catch with strikes, too. So, you know, it reminds me somewhat of a, uh, not a John Jones, but he definitely uses his distance well. Cabral is also a very lengthy fighter, though, as well. Just does not have as good a striking as Johnny Case. Case is a very explosive striker. He's got nasty leg kicks. Uses his uh, range very well. Um, I could see this one probably ending in a finish early, somewhere in between the first and third round. Um, I think the under here might be good at positive 120. Either one, either Cabral locks in a nasty sub on Case, or Case gets a TKO, you know, highlight reel that he likes to, you know. He's going to go for a bonus. Case is one of those guys who goes for the bonuses when he can. Um, I like him because he's a finisher. Um, I've won money on him in the past before for his finishes. So, you know, that's something to note. Um, he may be worth parlaying here. Um, I don't know that he's worth three to one against Cabral. Cabral is a good fighter. He's not, you know, he's only lost one time, I think, is what it was. If you look back on his record here. He lost his last fight, so he is coming off of a loss, which sometimes is all it takes to motivate somebody to really improve. Case has lost four times in their early career losses, it looks like. 71% KO, TKO. Rarely goes to decision here. This guy rarely goes to decision, too. So it's like kind of a no-brainer, you know, to, to, to take the under here. I mean, I feel like they're giving him any away. But, you know, we could see something weird. Like I say, the ones that look like they're the most ripe, sometimes the UFC just kind of turns the tables on everybody. And I really feel like there's fixing involved with Vegas. Um, you know, but there's no way for me to really prove that. I can just kind of tell you about it. Um, but sometimes the line movements, you can definitely spot some fishy stuff. Um, Cabral... Uh, I just I see one of these guys finishing the other, and I don't see it being Cabral finishing Case because I feel like Case can defend most of those subs pretty easily, um, and Case is probably not going to take the fight to the ground. He's going to be most comfortable on his feet, and he's going to probably be able to keep it there. And the longer that it stays on the feet, the more likely that this guy's going to sleep, so or breaking a rib or something. Um, so. My lean here is to go with Johnny Case to win uh, the fight via uh, TKO second round. Um, it should go under. Um, so I lean under as well. Uh, next fight, we have two really good fighters that I like to watch fight. They're both pretty exciting. Uh, Gleason Tebow and Abel Trujillo. Um, both these guys have had, uh, they fought kind of, um, well, mainly Tebow. Tebow has fought the who's who of MMA. I mean, this guy, if you look at his um, record of who he's fought, you know, Tebow is up right up there with Frank Mir as far as, like, number of fights that he's had in the UFC. So he has a legitimate experience against wins against Norman Park recently, Peter Hallman. None of those guys, neither of those two guys are pushover fighters. Those guys are tough fighters. Pat Healy, I mean, this guy is kind of ran through, not ran through him, but 
you look here, he's taken, he took the, him down five times. He took Norman Park down twice, which is really hard to do. Healy, he took down four times. So, you know, and Trujillo has been, had in the past questionable takedown defense. Um, the, the main thing with both of these guys, <laughs> they both are coming off of a loss to Tony Ferguson, which is kind of funny. Um, if you look at Trujillo, he's coming off a loss to Tony Ferguson as well. So um, Trujillo is a very explosive fighter. We could definitely see him getting a lucky KO. Um, although I find that, I think it's going to be very, very unlikely that he, he does. Um, I feel like Tipa has pretty high fight IQ. Um, he's going to try to take the fight to the ground where he does best and where he does the most damage. And uh, he's going to grind it out with his wrestling to decision. Trujillo is going to be swinging for the fences, trying to knock him out. I just don't foresee that happening with Tebow. I think Tebow's got so much experience under his belt. He's going to know what to do there. He's going to he's going to stay out of the pocket. He's going to try to get it to the ground. He's going to drag Trujillo down and wear him out the same way that Khabib Nurmagomedov dragged Trujillo down to the ground. Maybe not 17 takedowns in one fight, but he'll definitely get him to the ground, I think. So... My lean here on this fight is to go with Gleason Tebow at negative 126 and for the fight to hmm, more than likely go over here. Um, I think that the dictator is going to be Tebow, and he's a 63% decision fighter. I don't think he's, he's got a good chin. I don't think he's going to knock out. I don't think Trujillo is going to knock Tebow out. Although we could see something funny happen like we always do at least once. But I think this is a solid play here. Um, I don't know if it's going to be an official play or not, depending on what, how the lines move. But right now they look pretty good. Um, I would probably say this one's going to go over. And um, it's going to go to T-Bow by a unanimous decision victory. Next fight. Corey Anderson, Fabio Maldonado. There's really not much to be said here. I mean, we've got an ultimate fighter winner, light heavyweight in Anderson, and a an undefeated boxer, professional boxer, that somehow decided to come into MMA, um, Fabio Maldonado. Um, Maldonado, most of his victories have come via KO and TKO. Um, Anderson hasn't really finished a whole lot of guys. Although the last fight that he fought, I believe he did get a finish, if I remember correctly. Um, and it was against um, somebody, Jan Blakowicz. Um, no, he didn't get a finish. He got a unanimous decision victory. Um, Anderson is a wrestler. So something to take note. He's probably going to try to drag the fight to the ground. And Maldonado really is not a very good wrestler or grappler. Um not with the credentials of some of the other Brazilians. Um, I mean, you look at a guy like Hans Stringer being able to get Maldon out of the ground. It's pretty embarrassing. Fiante got him down to the ground three times. He really just doesn't have the takedown defense to be defending guys from getting him to the ground. Um, he's a jujitsu brown belt. Um, Big deal. He definitely relies on his hands more than anything. Um, although, you know, if he gets somebody in the pocket, it's kind of dangerous for just about anybody. So could see a surprise here. Um, it's kind of funny because if you look at the trends here with Maldonado, uh, let me pull him up here. It's got kind of a funky trend going on here, which is kind of funny. Got to look at this, but... If you look at his win-loss record lately in the UFC, let me expand the full history here. So he's got he had this one trend going here where he lost, he won one, and then that was his first UFC fight. So he lost three in a row after that, mainly to pretty tough opponents. Okay, well, not really that tough. Glover was the toughest. Um, 
And then he goes on to win three fights in a row against hmm, decent opponents, I guess you'd say. So now he's on this new weird trend where he won one, lost one, won one, lost one. If he follows that same trend, he's going to win one here, which is kind of funny because if you look at the odds of this fight, <laughs> he's like a four to one underdog here. So, I mean, whether or not he follows that trend, probably not. But, you know, just something to kind of look at. Weird trends like that. These fighters that kind of are just kind of oddballs. A lot of times they follow those trends. Um, but uh, I, I don't foresee him winning here. I see him getting taken down. You know, if he does win, it's going to be at the beginning of one of the rounds where he's on his feet and he lands a flush hit to the chin of Corey Anderson, which Anderson I don't think is going to take many chances here with with that. Um, I don't think he's going to be standing much. Excuse me, I'm tired. Um, it should go over pretty easily, which, <laughs> I mean, a negative 240 for the over. Come on. It's like, who's going to fucking play that line? Not me. <laughs> and then Corey Anderson at negative 500. You gotta be fucking stupid to like lay that much money on somebody who's not. I mean, even though it's Maldonado, Maldonado could still get a KO. I would never put five to one on anything like that. I don't know who they think they're fooling with these lines, but I guess there's a sucker out there for everything. So yeah, my lean's to go with Corey Anderson to win this one by wrestle fuck. <clears throat> he's going to lay on him the whole time. And maybe if he decides to be ambitious enough, maybe he'll try to lock in a sub, which probably would be really easy to do. This is like a gimme fight for Corey Anderson. The, the UFC is giving him, and that's probably why the odds are so suggestive of that being a gimme fight. Uh, if he really fucks up though, and he leaves himself open to standing in the pocket, he could get his ass beat pretty easily. But I don't see that happening here. I think the UFC is behind Corey Anderson. They like the guy. They want to give him a couple more fights. And they want to kind of move him up a little bit. And since he's a newer fighter, they're probably going to want to promote him here pretty soon. So we may see a finish here from Corey Anderson. Don't be surprised if he wins with a finish, even though he's not really that exciting of a fighter, in my opinion. Um, we could see a finish here for him to get some attention and promotion. Like they like to promote a lot of these fighters. So just be aware of that. Something to look at there. Um, moving on. This is the fight that I think that I'm the most excited about. Um, we've got two really high level fighters here. We can get the hell off of this page. So, we go back here. Um, one of my favorite fighters, Rashid Magomedov, a Dagestani striker slash wrestler. Um, the guy's only lost one fight. He is br absolutely brutal. Um, I want to look more at more footage on him. I remember when he fought Tony Martin. Tony Martin was able to get him to the ground, I think, a couple of times. Um, and... Tony Martin doesn't have quite the credentials that Gilbert Burns has. Gilbert Burns is an undefeated fighter. He's never lost. And the guy has such high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that he basically is cornered with Vitor Belfort as his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor, basically. So that's something that we really need to take a note of here is Burns is like one of the highest level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys out there right now next to guys like Damian Maya, who arguably he may be able to compete with a guy like Damian Maya pretty easily. Um, he has wins over Alex Oliveira, which is a very difficult win. Um, he locked in a sub third round. He was actually losing that fight. Um, and he is able to come and just get a sub when he finally decided to try to get him to the ground. And Oliveira is no easy, easy guy to get to the ground. Um, Christos Gallegos, uh, round one submission, completely dominated Andreas Stahl. So the guys fought 
not a whole lot of super experienced guys, but he trains with very, very experienced guys like Vitor and, um, you know, a lot of the other teammates at that gym. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. Um, Rashid, very, very difficult guy to take down. Very difficult. Um, the guy is a decision fighter, and he also knocks guys out. Um, he's got a lot of power in his hands, but he's more of a technical striker. One of the most technical Russian strikers that there is. Very accurate. Pinpoint accuracy of strikes. Very, very good defense against strikes. Very, very good defense against takedowns. The guy's got a 91.67% takedown defense. Um, Burns has a 100% takedown defense. So, you know, neither of these guys end up on their back much. Burns is kind of a sloppy-ass striker. I don't like him as a striker at all. I feel like when he gets somebody on the ground, they are definitely in big, big trouble. Magomedov can defend arm bars very well. Um, as we saw with Tony Martin, he was in some big time trouble and he knows how to defend those arm bars. Got out of it, snaked out of it, and then went on to win the fight. And just completely trashed Martin in the third round. Um, if you look back here, I wanted to, kind of curious to see how many times Martin was able to get him down. Um, going to be a really interesting fight. Martin got him down one time, and nobody else has gotten Magomedov down to the ground. Silverio didn't even get him down, and Silverio is a pretty big fighter. Rodrigo Dam, who's also a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy, did not get him down once. Um, the guy, he's fought guys that are good wrestlers already, so he's used to people trying to take him down, and he uses his distance so well. Um, so, hmm. it's just tough to say what's going to happen here. I like Gilbert Burns, though. I don't know why. I feel like he, the UFC really likes him, and he's in Brazil, and they're going to try to promote that. My mind tells me Magomedov. My heart tells me Gilbert Burns. And um, just because I feel like uh, there's a possibility he could get a lucky trip and get Magomedov to the ground somehow. Um, and if he does get him to the ground, I think the fight's going to end that round that it gets him to the ground. I don't foresee this one. Um, you know, if it goes to the ground, somebody's going to finish for sure. Um, although the odds makers, I believe they had this one at a 200 line as well. Eh, closer to 200. 2.5 rounds is negative 166. Magomedov was a negative 150, and he moved all the way to 200. So he's kind of out of range there. I, I would not put that much down on Magomedov. I think the, the fight is going to be a little bit closer than what those lines suggest. I think Gilbert Burns is worth a shot here at positive 180. I like him. I like his Brazilian jiu-jitsu. don't really like his striking, but I think he could hold his own and possibly, you know, work in uh, change levels and take down Magomedov at least once. And if he does get him down to the ground once, I feel like that could be the end of Magomedov on the ground. We could see a finish here more than likely. It's going to go to decision though. Um, so my lean is to go with the over here, but I'm going to really seriously consider the finish in this fight. Um, positive 140 it definitely would be like one of those opposites the UFC likes to throw at us um, but highly unlikely um, so yeah my leans to go with Gilbert Burns to win by submission in the second round um, I like those two plays right there I think one of them will hit um, I like them but I'm not sure about them I, gotta, I want to look at a little few more things before I play in. Um, next fight, Alex Ol Cowboy Oliveira and Peter Holman. Um, we're getting to the end here of our fight for this um, card. Let's take a look here. Uh, Oliveira and Holman. Oliveira has really just come a long ways. The guy... Very, very tough, strong guy. 
Hallman also a very tough, strong, durable guy. Um, I'd go for toughness factor and creativity and diversity. I would go with Oliveira hands down as being the better fighter. But Hallman has that underdog potential. He's got that heart um, and he's got striking ability and pressure. He uses pressure to his advantage. And Oliveira in the past has had some difficulties with pressure fighters. So, you know, definitely something to look at there. I just don't see Oliveira losing in Brazil, though. I feel like he kind of is going to bring himself up to another level. He's at a negative 210. As those odds suggest, let's see what we're doing over here. About the same, negative 207 on nitrogen. Uh, yeah, my lean's to go with Oliveira here. And for the fight to go under, I think he's going to lock in a sub and get a finish. I wouldn't be surprised. Or TKO. So I think you're good there at the positive 155 and the money line at negative 207. Um, definitely can see that happening. Don't see it going to a decision. And if you look on their records, this guy has 67% TKO rate. And this guy doesn't hardly go to decision at all. He 47% of the time gets a KO or 47% of the time gets a sub. So both these guys are finishers. We have like a 20% chance of a decision. Why in the hell this fight? Um, the odds suggest for <laughs> to, to go all over. Why in the hell that is, I don't know. Why in the hell they would want to give away money, I don't know. But I think you're good there. I think that this line's good. Um, but I don't know. We'll see what we play tomorrow. I kind of want to play a little more conservatively after getting my ass beat down on the last card. It was not fun at all. I'm not used to losing that much. But you know what? It happens to the best of us. It happens to the best handicappers out there. I'm not going to sweat it. We're going to come back and we're going to win money this time. Going to get back on the positive. Um, Thomas Almeida and Anthony Burchek. Burchek is like a 4 to 1 underdog. Almeida, negative 427 on the line. Uh, a lot of people are really hyping this guy up. I have not looked, if I'm to be honest, I have not looked at much footage on, on either of these guys. I'm not confident taking a lean here, but I do know one thing. Almeida has 15 of his 20 wins by first round finish. And um, that under right there looks juicy to me. <laughs> um, Burchek thinks that he's going to be able to hang with Almeida. But um, 15 out of 20 of his fights coming from finish in the first round, that kind of says a lot there. So... This guy's going to be looking for an early finish. Burchek, probably not going to be. Um, so it's kind of like who gets the better of who and how fast. Um, and I think Almeida is going to come away with this one, probably with a KO, um, a quick KO too. So the under, I think, is pretty good there at a positive 120. I like that. Um, I don't like betting on... Uh, under or over under 1.5 round fights but i think that's going to be plenty of time to get it done i really do so that's something to kind of look at there and i think almeida is going to get the victory more than likely for sure i'll probably be laying off that though probably not going to parlay it just because i've seen bird check he's been able to hang with a lot of fighters that are pretty good so Probably not going to mess with that one. I would hate there to be an upset and then people, you know, lose a bunch of money. But um, my leans are to go with Thomas Almeida to win via TKO first round and for it to go under 1.5 rounds. Um, Patrick Cummins, Glover Teixeira. Um, go back over here. Uh, this one's... I think that this one's probably going to be a little bit more difficult than what the odds makers suggest with Glover. Glover's a great wrestler, but Patrick Cummins is a better wrestler, in my opinion. You know, he's a collegiate level wrestler, although Glover has underrated wrestling. So I'm really not too sure how Glover is going to 
uh, you know, with the Phil Davis fight, it makes me really nervous to put money on Glover just because Glover is like a five, negative 500 almost here. That's like, that's ridiculous against a, a strong top heavy wrestler, top control wrestler like Patrick Cummins. Cummins is a positive 400 here. It's like, geez, man, that's like kind of tempting. I don't see Patrick Cummins winning this one. I think he's too stupid of a fighter. He's got a low fight IQ, although I think he kind of got a little bit of IQ from his last fight. I actually lost money because I faded him. Um, I thought that he's going to get KO'd, and he almost did, but somehow his chin held up. So, you know, and it went over. I thought it was going to go under for sure. This one right here, jeez. Um, over under set at 1.5 rounds on this. And I think Glover's going to be good for at least a round. He's not going to get knocked out. And Cummins, I think Cummins is expecting for the fight to, I mean, he's expecting for Glover to try to keep it standing. When he shoots for takedown, he's either going to get it or he's going to get stuffed and it's going to stay on the feet. And the longer that it stays on the feet, the uh, less likelihood Patrick Cummins is going to be awake. So uh, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say what's going to happen exactly, how well Glover's going to be able to defend those takedowns. But if we look back at Phil Davis's takedowns with Glover, Glover just looked completely like shit after he gassed. And we could see the same thing here with the Patrick Cummins that has a really big gas tank from being in wrestling, um, being at a high level of collegiate wrestling at Penn State. Um, I, I feel like Patrick Cummins here, I almost have to go with the wrestler here. It's tough not to. And Patrick Cummins just keeps improving and improving. Glover is definitely the better fighter here overall. I mean, if you factor everything in, Glover is the better fighter. But Patrick Cummins has very good wrestling, strong wrestling. And if you tries to wrestle fuck Glover, I mean, I don't see Glover subbing him. And Patrick Cummins is a very top control heavy guy. He's hard to get off of you once he's on top. And he knows how to manipulate people's bodies to keep them pinned down. Um, and that comes from that wrestling background. I think it's going to go over. I think it's going to go over 1.5 rounds, and I think that it's going to be pretty close, closer than what the odds suggest. I would probably put a Glover at a, a negative 250-ish. I don't think that the odds here suggest what probably is true, um, which is kind of suspicious in my opinion. Um, Cummins is definitely worth the shot at positive 400, although it's highly unlikely that he actually gets – the win here. I think that he could get a win if he, you know, an upset win with WrestleFuck, Thea WrestleFuck. Um, I don't see him finishing Glover at all. Glover's too tough. Definitely not on the feet. Glover's more than likely going to finish Cummins. But I think Cummins is smart enough now, and hopefully his chin, he's figured out how to protect that chin that he can last longer than 1.5 rounds. So, over is the play here, or not the play, I guess, but my lean. And um, I'm going to go with Glover. I feel like Glover's going to get it done somehow. He's probably going to stuff a takedown and then clip Cummins in the chin at some point. But I, I don't think it's going to happen in the first round. I'd be very surprised. But, you know, like I said, I don't know 100%. Anytime that they have these 1.5 round lines, it's almost kind of like they're trying to tempt you into taking him taking the over so and moving on to our last fight of the night for this card my personal favorite on the card vitor belfort versus dan hendo henderson dan henderson is one of my favorite fighters i just feel like there's he's just got that something special about him where you know the guy will fight anybody it doesn't matter if they're heavyweight or if they're middleweight um, the guy has just got balls of steel. You know, he's a legend. He's beat the who's who, and he just keeps beating people. And the guy's fucking almost 50 years old. It's like, 
when are you going to retire, bro? But he just keeps knocking guys out. He still has the mental game of Dan Henderson is hard to replace. And anybody, you'd be stupid not to be afraid of this guy because he's game against anybody. He can. He has the potential to win anybody. And that right hand is a money right hand. He's knocked out so many guys with that right hand. And everybody knows about the right hand, but they still, he somehow fa- finds a home for it. Um, he got knocked out by Gegard. Boch, he knocked him out. I don't even know why he was an underdog in that fight, but, you know, I called that one. That was pretty easy. Um, Belfort, on the other hand, has already knocked out Henderson. So that makes me a little nervous to, you know, back him here but Henderson has this way about him it's kind of like it's kind of like he knows when he's gonna win kind of thing and he just seems so sure of himself this time around that it makes me almost believe it myself um and I almost want to I kind of want to put a small play on Henderson here I don't know that Vitor is worth laying three to one on or three and a half to one or whatever it is that he is um the line's coming in Negative 339. I think that those are going to probably go a little bit more in Vitor's favor as the fight draws near. Um, Henderson's like a three to one underdog here. The guy is game. He's game to win the fight. Uh, it's very, very tempting to take him there. Um, the over is actually a positive 132. So everybody pretty much thinks it's going to end in the first round, which makes me believe that it's probably not. <laughs> it's probably going to end or go to decision or second or third round so my official prediction for this fight uh, my official prediction for this fight is for dan henderson to win via ko very first round i don't know why but i think it's going to happen and it, <laughs> somebody agrees with me here that somebody's getting ko'd negative 156 so i just had that gut feeling And that's what I'm going to go with there. I'm going to go with my gut. So um, those are my predictions and leans. They will change more than likely in a not official place. So just take them with a grain of salt. I really do hope everybody wins this card. And I I really hope that, um, you know, all the analysis has paid off for us. Um, I'll post my final plays before the cards start. Just before each card starts, I'll post several plays for that card Um, so stay tuned make sure that you add um, make sure that you add me to your twitter alerts tomorrow Um, that way you know in real time when i post a play you can actually get the good line on it Um, trying to find my way back to the screen here Um, but i apologize for uh not having this feed up sooner. Um, it's been a very busy month for me, but I did manage to get some time <clears throat> some time to view this card's footage. And I'm pretty confident in some of these picks that I'm gonna probably release. So hope everybody does well. Once again, like I said, make sure that you head to the bottom of the video here, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, youtube.com forward slash best MMA picks. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. Like I said, again, twitter.com forward slash best MMA picks. And then if you are interested at all in, um, getting any of these lines, um, two good books that I know of, um, directbet.eu, very good. Um, you can send bitcoins anonymously to the book. Um, very, very good book. They pay out very quickly after winning bets um most of them both both of them are based out of costa rica um very good books um but and then then the other one is a nitrogen sports where you actually have to have an account or an anonymous account if you want one um and both those links at the bottom of this video very very bottom if you scroll down um and uh yeah so Uh, Good luck, everybody. I'm a little tired, but hope everybody enjoyed the video. Sorry, it's probably not the most exciting, but it's all informational. It's good information. Spent some time on it. So 
Um, take that for what it is. And I'll promise I'm going to have more excitement for you and more entertainment in these videos eventually. I just don't have the time right now to really think out how I'm going to make everybody laugh and entertain and get up on a horse and, you know, get puppets out and shit. So um, right now we're focusing on making money. So, and that's all that matters. If I make you money, that makes me happy. So um, like I said, uh, good luck, everybody. Um, enjoy the football this weekend as well. Um, you know, you can turn alerts off after the fights if you want, because um, I do post a lot of football and basketball. Um, I do follow other sports. I don't handicap them myself, but I follow others who are very good handicappers. So um, there may be some plays that are posted or retweeted. Um, feel free to check those out if you want to. But um, over and out for now, um, JD signing out best MMA picks and hope everybody has a great weekend.